Zion, Zion, Zion Williamson, bro. AD, every time no. they fucking play. Zion, <laughs> no, Zion, Zion stick that bro, and his I every bro. Play, bro. But I just, I just feel like this puts LeBron James in the top ten humans ever. I drop the charges in court. I only might, I might get expelled. I'll take Brock Purdy over Dak Prescott right now. Welcome back to another episode of the Taylor Tap Podcast, episode twenty-three. Today we're gonna do an NBA Awards show. It's been a long season. We started the podcast like right before the All Star break, so or a, a couple weeks before the All Star break, so. It was it's December, not, right? Was yeah, it December? December. So, so like a little bit before the All Star break, a little before the season came to like the midway point. I wish we would have started in the beginning of the season. We would have had like our best takes, uh, our worst takes, like in the, to start the season. But um, you know, next year we're gonna have all of that. You know, uh, I'm excited to see us keep growing. I think we had 800 followers now on TikTok. We we did really well on TikTok this past weekend. Uh, we're up to like 168 followers on on YouTube, and so the season is over. It's time to do NBA awards. We're going to do all NBA teams. We're going to do all the awards. We're going to do teams we were most impressed with, players we were uh, least impressed with, and stuff like that. It's going to be a, a good episode today. But, you know, to start, how y'all been? You know, it's Easter today. Um, I, That means a lot, a lot for some people. But, <laughs> yeah. For some people? What's that supposed to mean, Latif? What's that supposed to mean? I, we're not, it's just not, it's not the type of podcast. Um, yeah, I got you. But Jay know what that means. But, um, yeah, how y'all been, though, today? I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm very hungry. It's a nice day, though. Uh, weather's nice outside. First, uh, nice day in a little bit, so it's nice. All right, let's get uh, let's get right into it. First, you're gonna start off with this Dallas disaster. Um, the the, the Dallas Mavericks missed the play in this uh, this year. They started. They were 20, 29 to twenty six at the halfway point of the season. They traded for Kyrie at the trade deadline and went uh, seven to seventeen. So, um, who is the most to blame for Dallas missing the play in this year? Uh, I'll, I'll take it first. I don't really know. Um, I'd say you, you might have to blame the front office. Uh, they tried to put pieces around Luca to work that just haven't worked out. Um, you brought in Christian Wood, uh, you bring in Kyrie, um, with the whole, obviously with the whole Jalen Brunson thing, right? Jalen Brunson's been balling out. Um, and they kind of kept saying like, Hey, like we can't, whatever. We had no chance to sign him, but they had no, you know what I mean? Like, have you guys seen that? Like, yeah. they didn't have the opportunity to sign him because, whatever, they already got uh, – he already went to the Knicks. Um, no, I feel like – Well, he said it was – Mark Cuban said it was uh, Rick Brunson's fault, that his dad was uh, – got too involved in the contract negotiations. And so, um, it was basically his fault. But they yeah. could have offered him a – they offered – I think they – I think he was they ready to sign a four-year, 55 million contract the before, the, before the – Midway through the year. And then after their, his playoff run, he wanted more money, which they couldn't do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I don't, I wouldn't blame Luca. I don't even blame Kyrie. Um, you could blame the uh, maybe you could blame like the side pieces. You could blame the um, Reggie Bullocks and the Christian Woods of the world. But at the end of the day, like I think you got to blame the front office for not putting the right pieces around Luca. But yeah, this the dumpster fires kind of came out of nowhere. I thought, I mean, I I thought Dallas was a lock, especially with getting Kyrie to make the playoffs. But um, yeah, I really, I'm kind of still confused on how they didn't really make it work. Obviously, their defense is terrible, but um, yeah, it's maybe blame coaching, I guess. Blame Jason Kidd for the defensive part, but I don't know. I'm like still very surprised they didn't make the playoffs. So, you want to go, Jaden, or you want to let me go? No, you can go. Um, Dallas Mavericks are a disaster, a dumpster fire organization right now. Ever since Luca has came into the league, they have failed to put a, like the correct pieces around him for him to actually succeed. They tried to bring in Chris Porzingis. That didn't work. They traded for Kyrie after having Jason play like his ass off in the playoffs. So they would have got Jalen Brunson at a cheaper price if they would have just signed him earlier. And they would have got the same production or a little bit less than they got from Kyrie and still being able to keep all the defensive pieces. The downfall of this organization was trading for Kyrie. And it's not Kyrie's fault. It's a, it's a problem with the personnel. They traded Dorian Finney-Smith. They traded Spencer Dinwiddie. Dorian Finney-Smith was their best defender, and they were an okay defensive team before he um, the problem is they weren't hitting shots, and Luca was having to do too much. But by trading for Kyrie, which he's a free agent this summer, so I don't know why they traded for Kyrie in the first place. He can literally walk out the organization, and they basically traded him for nothing, and they just lost Mr. Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith, the heart of their team. So the biggest reason that Dallas failed this year was their front office for sure. It wasn't Luca. It wasn't Kyrie. It was because the front office failed. They have no type of defense. They have no rim protector. They have no perimeter defenders. 
and that's a that's a front off front office coaching problem, personnel problem. That's that's not Luca, that's not that's not Kyrie. So that's that's the biggest reason that the, the Dallas failed this year. Jane, you got it? You, yeah, Jane, you want to go? Or you want to hop in the yeah, next idea? Yeah. I'll say something. So, um, I don't really disagree. I disagree with Latif when you say they have no rip protectors. They're just choosing not to play JaVale McGee. JaVale McGee is their rip bro. protector. <laughs> Come on, bro. bro. Does he not? Does he not help? Does he not help? He's they bro, don't I'm play not gonna him. lie. JaVale McGee is like thirty. <laughs> like he's like thirty-five. One. He's not. Still, bro. He's not good enough. He's way better. He's he's way better than fucking Dwight Powell, bro. Yeah, but that's not saying much though. I mean, I, I feel like playing him. Still, I mean, he, if, if he, he played a game like thirty minutes one time, they still got they they still up so many points. It is probably, they have no one to even like. He's not a good enough room protector to let like if you have Kyrie and you have Luca as your perimeter defenders, he's not to alleviate any of that, bro. I and, I think he's a way better option than than Dwight Powell. Though. I feel like we can all agree on that part. I'd rather them play Christian Wood than than, than JaVale McGee. They should have played Christian Wood. They didn't play Christian Wood at all. Like yeah, that's, that's... I, and I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that. Uh, Christian Wood definitely didn't get the minutes that he does. He deserves. Uh, he's a great offensive weapon. Uh, defense, I don't know, but I feel like he does serve a better purpose than uh, JaVale McGee. If you want to look at it in that regard. Second, uh, it was just they don't have defensive pieces. Uh, I don't think they should have traded for Kyrie. If you had a way to get Jalen Brunson, it sounds like maybe it, it was that the chance of that was slim to none. But if there was some type of way to get him, I feel like you should have done that. But yeah, it's just the defensive pieces. Uh, I think Luca came out and said that they don't. He doesn't think they could stop anybody, and that's true. They couldn't stop anybody, so that's why uh, they're in a the position that they're in right now. Uh, My next question me. is: Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was gonna. Sorry, I was gonna hop in the next thing, but I was gonna transition off what you said, Luca. Like when you said Luca just says they can't stop anyone, Luca just looks so fed up and so pissed with the entire situation. You know what I mean? Luca just yeah. looks like beyond. Like obviously they made the Western Conference Finals last year, but like I mean they didn't have tons of success in his first couple of years in the league. But like right now, I, I've never seen Luca like fed up like this from his own organization. I feel like for the most part he enjoys Dallas. He enjoys, you know what I mean? He enjoys the organization. He enjoys the city. But he just, yeah, he just doesn't look like he wants to be there right now. So, I like, it's weird, I guess, seeing Luca like, this. Because, like, I mean, obviously with the whole Devin Booker thing, he was mad at Booker, like, right? Like, that kind of, that little beef was going back and forth. Like, you see him that kind of mad. But I don't think we've ever seen, like, Luca like, frustrated yeah, within with the organization like he is right now. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't, and it seemed like anger to me. It seemed like, uh, it seemed like discouragement. It seemed like he was like I was watching the interview with him and he said he had a lot of stuff going on. I think he may have some stuff going on basketball that he was dealing with as well. And then the the, the overall team um being terrible, I think that that really um hurt his mood as well. And then he was saying like he he missed uh Jalen Bronson and stuff like that. I don't think that's good for the team to be saying he missed Jalen Bronson. But I don't know, man. It's kind I of think it's went, bad. It's, he's not saying he's like wishes somebody he was there over somebody. I think he just misses the production that he brings. That's what I heard when he said that. I mean. My, I mean, my next question, I think, though, like I feel like that that might alienate Kyrie a little bit, and that's nah. that's going to my point. Like, should the Mavericks resign Kyrie next year? No, I think I think um, uh, first of all, if you can get the, some defensive pieces, I don't see why not. Yeah, I guess, but I. So who was it that said? Um, was it Bill Simmons said that he thinks Kyrie and will resign in Dallas, and then LeBron and Draymond Green will both try and go to Dallas too to join up with Luca and Kyrie. Yeah, we don't gotta entertain that. So. I don't think that's whatever. That's not going to happen. I don't think – I think Luca and I think Kyrie are super fun to, uh, to watch play together. I don't think that they are, like, the best pairing you could have, right? I don't think it's, like, the best pairing. Two crazy offensive scores. I would want a defensive piece in the uh, in your backcourt instead of Kyrie. I think, and like – Who would that be? Like, Jaylen ideally, Brown, who would you say? Jalen Brown. I get he had a bad defensive year this year. I know we keep talking about that. But, like – Kyrie does everything with the ball in his hands, and Luca does too. And I, I, Luca does not. I don't think Luca works the greatest off ball because he's the offense. I think Jalen Brown, if they could try and talk, I don't think he'd do a sign and trade. I think Kyrie should leave. I don't think Kyrie needs to be in Dallas. I think Kyrie can move on. I think it's gonna be it's more on Dallas's fault for spending so much to get Kyrie in the first place when he was basically just a rental player. But um, I think we've talked about Jalen Brown a lot on this podcast about going from team to team. Um, and Dallas obviously has to look at if they want to – you don't want to trade Luka. But um, 
they got to kind of look at what's the future for them. Uh, and I think they will still try and win now with Luca. You're not going to trade. You're not going to give up on him yet. So I think uh, any superstar player, Bradley Beal, uh, Jalen Brown, Dame Lillard, anybody who is like in trade talks will be rumored to go to Dallas. But I would want a defensive, like a two-way um, backcourt piece with Luca. I don't think Kyrie is that. So I would. I I don't think they resign him. I think use that money and use whatever other pieces you have. Use your first round pick and you try and trade for somebody else. I think they have to resign him. Like, well, if you don't resign Kyrie, what was the whole entire point of, of giving away Dorian Finney Smith and giving away since the deal with he at the trade deadline? Like, what, what you was thought you were making the playoffs? You thought you were making the playoffs. Okay, you but then were... it, but then to go back and not resign him, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, um, yeah. If, if you're you gonna give up all your assets just to you, have you gave up a players. first round pick, two players in the middle of the like, it makes no sense for three months, bro. So that you, makes no sense just, to me. Are you so you're just gonna be very stuck? Like I guess my thing I'm thinking like okay, just like why not just cut your losses now? It's not it's obviously not working out. You don't have how much money they got in for we didn't I'm look this up. How much money they got in upcoming free? I don't know how much they have next year, but I think if they if they re sign Kyrie and ask some more pieces on the perimeter. Defensively, the next team, they're a good team. Like, who's available? I don't. I haven't looked at the free agency market yet. It's, it's still in the regular season, but it's, it, it will be three and D players on the market. It is. It's three and D players every year. That's what they need. They have someone to take the offensive pressure off of Luca. They just need a better. They need a better room protector. They need someone on the wing that can guard people, and that'll be good. I mean, Jalen Brunson. I mean, Kyrie's still an upgrade from Jalen Brunson, right? Like, like when it comes down to it. So they if they can. They can go have the same success they had with Jalen Brunson. They just need the defenders. They don't got Dorian Finney Smith. They don't got Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie is an okay defender. They don't have um, I mean, the, the and then the culture was just a whole a whole lot different last year. They were fifth in defense last year. Jason Kidd instilled that. I think Jason Kidd needs to go. Um, I don't think he's a good coach. Um, they need to hire somebody else. I think Mark Cuban needs to um not have so much to do with the organization next year. It's, it's a lot of changes they need to make. All right, so they literally have so you got Kyrie and you got Luca, each twenty forty million a year. You have almost what? Kyrie's 40 not getting million. forty million a year. You got forty million, fifty million tied up with Reggie Bullock, Dwight Powell, Christian Wood, Bertans, Tim Hardaway. You got sixteen plus going to Tim Hardaway and Davis Bertans. Like no one wants those contracts won. So how do you get those off your books? And if you're paying Kyrie, how much Kyrie are you gonna get then? He's gonna get a two three year deal. I think a two three year deal for some. I think. 30, 35, it'll be around 40 mil. Uh, I mean, it'll be around 40 mil. His How market is not going to be good. I mean, his market is not going to be that good. Kyrie's market is not going to be good. Nobody wants him, bro. I'm sorry. He wants a, he wants a long-term deal. Like, nobody wants all the stuff that comes with him. So Dallas will be really the only team that's going to, like, Lakers, obviously, because they, they're delusional. But, like, besides that, Jaylen I don't Brunson think he got paid. Jalen Brunson got paid twenty six million a year. Do you think Kyrie will get more than Jalen Brunson? I mean, yes, but that will be yes. Okay, I mean. so that puts him at thirty thirty five mil. I think yes, you put five not 40 10 mil. mil ahead. It's around the same ballpark. I mean, you can do a lot with five million. You, know, you took out the mid level exception and all that. They can still bring in veteran Dallas, pieces to, to, to play defense, bro. But they can, Dallas has so much money tied up in other stupid pieces that they have to figure out a trade to get this off the books. They, I don't think they have a ton of money. So you would have them. You would have. First round pick, lose Dorian Finney Smith, lose Spencer Dewey, and then just and then just get rid of Kyrie, and then then who they who they you, like you said who are they bringing in to 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 fill his place? Bradley Beal is, is a terrible option. I don't even know why you mentioned him. He that's that's a terrible. I'm option. not saying him. I'm saying every single superstar who will be in trade. Because you said Jalen Brown. Be, no, you said, said Jalen Brown. Brown. You said Jalen Brown. Brown be the number one guy. I but you had you had to trade for Jalen Brown one. Yes, you had to trade for Jalen Brown. And what are the what are the Mavs giving the Celtics that to make them do that? First round pick. Couple first round picks, try and give him depth with Christian Wood. Their centerpiece has been a revolving door. Robin Williams and uh, Al Horford are both good. I'm just saying, like, I don't think Kyrie's the answer. We could talk, we'll be in the same position next year when Kyrie and Luca finish as a what? I, you look at the West. Who are they who are they better than the West? Like, what pieces are you going to get to team, this, year? this current team is, is bad, but yeah, next year, like, if they have, they have different pieces, it'd be, it'd be better. I mean, that that would, if they get defensive pieces, then I don't see why. But, why pieces Luka that would help. Kyrie can't I, I think, together. I think, I think the one X. piece, the one piece you look at is OG and Anobi. I think if you try and talk to Toronto, would want three first round picks for him. Like OG and Anobi is a great piece that could help out their team so much on the defensive side, but he's worth. They're asking three first round picks. 
You know, like everybody's just so expensive now to trade for. It stuff. depends on the pick, though. I, I think. I think it depends on the pick. I think if it's a tenth pick, then they'll give that. They'll give that to them, and, that, and probably another one or a second round pick is my dad. But the tenth pick is no. the tenth pick is very valuable. They're but, not gonna get three, that, bro. Because if that's literally if it's no, three no, first round picks, Toronto, bro, Toronto got offered three first round picks for OG, and they said no. Bro, that those are probably three late first round picks, though. Because you think it about it, the, OG. I think it was. I think it was New York. If, if you think about it, OG, and those tip picks will be late because New York's gonna be good. Those picks will be late. The, okay, be, what's what's good? New York's gonna it's, be good. It's top. It's lottery. Those are not gonna be lottery picks. The next picks are not gonna be lottery. Are you saying Dallas is gonna be a lottery? I mean, like top ten. Dallas is gonna be end of the lottery. I think it'll be fourteen. This 10, year, 13, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. this year they have a top ten pick. They have a pick from um, New uh, York. Chris Alperzinga straight. It's top ten protected. Uh, uh, who are you saying? You say Dallas is top ten pick? Yes, they have a top. That's the reason they tanked uh, the other day, Max. They tanked la- the other day to get that top ten pick, bro. It's they had, the the odds are top ten protected, bro. Uh, they will have ten or eleven. Yeah, if they if they get um if they get eleven, it goes to the Knicks. But if it, if it's top ten, then they then they keep it. So, but what trade are you giving to, to like who are you getting? Like who who is the pieces that are gonna say? This piece is going to help you out significantly on the defense side of the ball. That is going to boost you just said up OG, Dallas. You just said OG, and I don't think they're going to ask for three first round picks if it's a, t- if it's a top ten pick. Because like, so where do you get him? You get him what? OG and what else? What other person on your team has value? Hardy? You're getting Jalen Hardy and Josh Green or something? They're not doing that. I think they should keep. I should keep Jalen Hardy and Josh Green. Josh Green is, so, is good on, on defense, but there's there's no one on that team. You think about on Toronto? Right? Toronto is going to probably be. We, we got to see. They should be heading into rebuild. They should be taking. They should be taking. Uh, I don't know. I gotta look into it. like is Reggie Bullock and Chris Abertons expiring contracts. They didn't even take expiring contracts. They didn't even take anything to get whatever they can get back for OG. And a top ten pick would be very good for OG. That's that's very just that by itself and a couple of players is enough. Like OG is a good player, but a top ten pick is, is can be better than OG. And they'll have like uh two in the top like uh fifteen. So I mean that'll be that'll be enough. They can get getting a play like OG is 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 is, is realistic, bro. It really is. They, that, that pick is top 10. It's realistic. For sure. Yeah. I think – so, Raptors uh, – whatever. The Raptors literally – their price was way too high for OG. Um, let's talk about this. Uh, Masai Ujiri, this is just for the Warriors. Jonathan Kuminga and others plus picks. Um, I don't the have Knicks a top 10 him, pick. The Knicks offered him three first-round picks. Like, I get it. That's fine. But at the end, like, three first-round picks where you don't know what they'll be at or one top 10 pick. One top ten, like, I, one top ten pick. You know where the you, first round you, picks that are up in the air. You know where those. You know where the. Well, obviously they're gonna add, probably add more first round picks than just the, the first one. But I think they probably do too because I mean three first round picks. You're trading them to the Knicks. I mean OG on the Knicks. The Knicks are probably gonna be good for the next few years. Those picks are gonna be late late for first round. Like the, the Knicks have established culture. Jalen Brunson is signed for a couple more years. Like they're gonna be good. The Knicks are gonna be good. They have one of the brightest futures in the NBA, bro. So them picks are gonna be late, probably like seventeen to twenty something. One of the great. Oh, the Knicks have one of the brightest futures in the NBA. They do. How old is Jalen Brunson, bro? For as long as he, they have Emmanuel quickly, Obi Toppin, like Quinn Grimes. They, they have the one of the best young cores. They have one of the best young cores in, in the New NBA. York will not be more than a four seed for the next four or five years, and that's fine. That is that is that a top? What, what pick is that? That's like it. De- it depends. Like, it depends on like what 19. the East and the West are. I'm just saying, like that's. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of talking more about how you said the Knicks would be one of the best teams. Like I they'll be that. mid. They will be mid. If you, I would rather have picks drafting. I would rather have three years of picking at 16 or 17 than one 10 pick. Anyways, we got to keep moving on. But you guys, I mean, you both. So you guys both want to resign because you've given up so much already. Why not resign them? Yes. So you're going all in on the Luca and Kyrie backcourt. Yes, that's that's not, bro. That's a, uh, a crazy great, a crazy good offensive backcourt. They just need to fill the pieces around them. The roster sucks. That's just, they just need to fill out the roster. If it's possible for them to fill out the roster, then they should obviously keep keep Kyrie. And it depends on how long. I, mean, I think Kyrie wants a long term. Depends on how much money he wants, how how long he wants. But um, it, it depends on what Luca wants as well. I mean, they got one more. They got like two more years of Luca until he can like. Uh, like get out of his contract and like request a trade and stuff like that. So it it, it all depends, bro. I don't so, want to talk about. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I, it's thinking more to the future. If Luca does request a trade, do you guys have any place that you want him to go or what? Only one I have is uh, Pelicans and Denver. 
is the only issue is you need to have a team who is uh they have the assets, but they can also have enough assets to where you're not trading your entire franchise for them. And I'll be biased, but the Thunder fit that mold. Yeah, but the Pelicans probably probably are better. They they fit that so, mold better. Give up. Talk, we, give up. What you, Zion Woods and yes, yes. Yo yo yo. This is a good conversation now. Um, Wait. So yeah, what so, do the Pels give up? What do the Pels give up to get the Luka? Pels give up? Zion Williamson and Dyson Daniels. That's and, it. In a, a pick or two. Yes, that's enough. We talking about Zion Wilson here. Yeah, no, I thought I thought you were gonna mess around and say Dyson Daniels and Herb Jones and Trey Murphy and picks. Like no, no, that'd no, be terrible. no, 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 no. Zion Williamson is a generational talent, and you can build a a, a team around him if he stays. Yeah, no, I I don't I don't mind that. I, I thought you were gonna say some dumb stuff like how we trained with Dame and how the, I thought you were gonna put him in the same value as Dame. Jaden, what do you think about that? Would you trade <laughs> Would you trade Zion for, for Luka Doncic? Uh. I wanted to talk about this later, but I don't know. The emergence of Trey Murphy, fucking, I don't know. Zion is just showing that he can't stay healthy, bro. And it's kind of a sad reality. As a fan of him, it's kind of hard to swallow that pill, but it's just looking like it is what it is. Is Zion a system player? You said what? Is Zion a system player? No. (laughs) Zion is the system, nigga. But uh, I don't know, man. <coughs> I definitely would trade yeah. Luka for a Zion without a. a yeah, uh, no, I thought you, I thought you were gonna mess around and just say it's similar to a Dame trade, but no, that team, that'd be I, I would agree with that. All right, y'all. Let's that get into um. Let's get into all. Let's get into the the postseason awards <laughs> for the NBA. Let's start off with uh, MVP. Who are you guys uh, MVP this year? Jokic. Jokic, why? Oh. Okay, sorry. Are we saying who we think it's going to be or who's our MVP? Who is your MVP? Jokic. Um, triple-double, averaging a triple-double as a center, number one seed in the West. I get his – the the records don't really matter because um, whatever. Philly would be the number one seed, if it, right? Philly would still be the number one seed. They have, like, the same record. Um, I, I think Jokic is more of their offense than Embiid is more of Philly's offense and just their whole team. I get defensively, Jokic doesn't carry the torch as much. But, um, yeah, I just think Jokic is their entire team. So, um, I mean, Jokic is – I mean, Jokic and B are the two front runners, but my Giannis, he has the best record in the league. He's the best player on the best team. This is going to sound repetitive because we said it last episode, but to be honest to me, he's he's just elite on both sides of the ball. Um, so, that, so that that's what weighs it out for me. I mean, he's better – He's it's a, on defense – um, for, for Giannis and Jokic. Jokic is obviously the better offensive player, but, I mean, I think Giannis is the most dominant player in the entire NBA right now. So, he's my MVP for this season. I mean, he's the one seed. He has a better record than, than the Nuggets. I mean, they obviously have a better team than the Nuggets. Without, without Jokic, the Nuggets are terrible. They're really bad. So, that's that's what that's what the argument is for Jokic and Giannis. I mean, Jokic, he, like his team, when, when he doesn't play, they're, they're really bad. And they, they really show, like, he's – very valuable. I'm not. I'm not arguing that he's not valuable, but I think. I think Giannis is the better player. I think he's better yes. on, um, on like on D. It's, it's clearing on offense for me. So, um, he has a better record. So yeah, that's that's my that's my um my MVP. It depends. It depends on your criteria for it because some people do like oh take the play off the team and um how how good are they? They take the play out of the team, but I don't think it should be like that. I mean. The Bucks are not the Bucks without Giannis. If Giannis doesn't play, they're twelve and six this year. They have a positive record, but you know the Bucks are not the Bucks without Giannis. And Giannis, um, I don't think he cares about APs, but he's been in the AP race for the last five years. And no, he does. He does care about it. He I mean, he, sh- he feels like he should have been uh, MVP for the. He felt yeah, he, he, he felt like he should have been uh, the the MVP for the last five seasons. I think I think I, I whatever. If we're talking about the best player in the league, Giannis is the best player in the league. I don't think many people are debating that. I think Giannis is the best player in the league right now. Um, and I get your, what you're saying. You don't want to do the whole takeaway thing. Uh, the Bucks are built very well, and I do agree they're not the same without Giannis. But I'd say the Nuggets are the same way. They're not the same without Jokic. And I think, whatever, uh, Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, Chris Middleton are all big pieces. Um, whereas, like, the Nuggets kind of run through Jokic. But, uh, Jay, you want to go? My MVP is Jokic. All right. Um, defensive player of the year. 
Who are you guys' defensive player of the year uh, picks? I'm going to start with uh, Jaden. Uh, I'll just take Triple J. Triple J? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a good selection. Um, he's, I think he led the league in blocks this year. But it's, with Triple J, I, with Triple J, what I, what I noticed is that he only plays 28 minutes a game. So he gets in foul trouble a lot, and then he doesn't play, like, the entire game as much as people like Reyes and Evan Mobley do. Uh, I think the Grizzlies have the third, the third best defense in the entire NBA. But for me, my defense is Evan Mobley. Uh, the Cavs have the best defense in the entire league, and he anchors that. I think um, he, you know, he uh, plays the entire game. He plays way more minutes than than, um, than Jaron Jackson Jr. And he, you know, he anchors he anchors the the best defense in the league. And I think that voters look at that heavily and, and lean um, Evan Mobley, or maybe they probably give it to Brook Lopez. I think Brook Lopez and and Evan Mobley are, are are better candidates because they because you know triple twenty eight minutes ain't enough, bro. He gets the fraud trouble a lot. Who you got, Max? Triple J. You got triple J for basic. a reason. Uh, it's basic and whatever. I feel like people are gonna bring up the whole like step padding argument. Like when he's in Memphis, he gets like all the blocks aren't his. Um, averaging three blocks, I think is stealing half a game. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that uh. Um, I, I, Brooke Lo- I think it's Brooke Lopez because, like, looking at all the odds and stuff, I think it's Brooke Lopez and Triple J's award. Brooke Lopez will take him a little bit off because he has Giannis and he does have Drew Holiday on his team who are both all-NBA defenders. Um, I, I get what you're saying with Evan Mobley. He's the number one defender on the best defensive team in basketball. I guess I'll just give it to Triple J. I like him. Um, yeah. I, when, he was, when he was out for injury, the Grizzlies were one of the worst defenses in the NBA. As soon as he came back, they're third now. So I think from from the time he came back until to now he has the, he has they have like the best That's defense the best yeah best defense in the NBA since he came back so I agree with that but I mean he just doesn't play enough like he only plays twenty eight minutes I, I, and I, I go to that I go to that watching the playoffs how I think if we end up playing the Grizzlies um, AD when, versus Triple J will be a good matchup I'll be yeah, curious but I think AD will give him foul trouble and they just lost uh, Stephen Adams they just lost. Brandon Clark, so the best defender is going to be Xavier and Tillman after um, Triple J. So I think that'd be a big storyline in a, in a, in a uh, potential playoff matchup if that happens. Next, we're moving on to Coach of the Year, and I think this is going to be unanimous. I mean, the Kings were the Kings the seventh AC this year, and um, they are they finished as the third seed in the West. So my Coach of the Year this year is Mike Brown. I got Mike Brown. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on that. He did a great job, and especially they haven't been doing it on the defense end as well. He learned a lot. I think he learned a lot over there on the Warriors um, about sets and just building a culture around their ball movement, unselfishness. unselfishness. He's turned um, De'Aaron Fox to a better playmaker. He's elevated Sabonis as a playmaker. I think we got to give him a lot of credit for that. Um, next is Rookie of the Year. I think this is probably going to be also uh, unanimous as well. Um, Paolo Bancaro is my rookie of the year. Good guy, Paolo. Paolo. I think Jalen Williams had a great year. Walker Kessler as well. But, yeah, I think whatever, Paolo. Most improved player. Uh, this could be I – mean, this could probably not be unanimous. Uh, it's a couple options. You got uh, Shea. Who, uh, who, Lori. Uh, it has to be Lori. Yeah, I mean, Lori is my pick too. I'm picking Lori. Um, last year he was like a star. This year he's a, he was an all-star. Uh, probably all NBA, NBA level player this year, but Jalen Brown. You said awesome. last year he was a star, starter, starter, he was starter, star, yeah. Um, on the mm. but this year, Lori is a all NBA level player. But you also got to trust him with Jalen Brunson. I think Jalen Brunson, uh, last 16, 16 points this year, he averaged around, around like 27. So a nine point jump has to be given some recognition. He's uh, definitely changed the culture over there in New York. The New York this year, um, was supposed to be. A playing team, and they're firmly in a four C, uh, fifty right now. And so I got to get a lot of love to Jalen Brunson, but I obviously got to pick Laurie though, because you know his jump is bigger. I feel like I'm picking Shay. Um, you guys can hate on me. That's cool. Laurie made his eleven point jump. I like uh, whatever. Laurie went from fourteen point eight to twenty five point six. Um, also rebounding wise, went up about two and a half rebounds. Um, I just feel like you can't take a rising star, like. Every- it's hard to the jump, but Shea, Shea had 20. He shouldn't he be in because, bro, he averaged 25 last year. But yeah, that like jump Shea from, is that already proven that he's going to be a star. Is a lot. 
averaging thirty one a averaging thirty one the season is a lot. That's a big jump. As much as you want to bro, say, it's, not, it's, it's a big like jump. seventy people who average thirty this year, bro. That's cool. I'm a, it's on the Thunder. Like we were supposed to win fifteen games this year, and for majority of the year, we're fighting for the playing seed. We're in the playoffs, whatever. Um, yeah, you, can okay. for, you can say I'm biased. No, it's okay. Like you can say I'm biased for it. But I'll pick Shay. Shay's are shit. Yeah, I'll pick Shay over Laurie. He averaged twenty five last year. Max. Huh? I'm not mad. I'm just. Saying he averaged twenty five points last year. And so like, yes. he was he was already an All Star level player last year. He just didn't have the wins, and he didn't have the games played last year. So I yeah, just feel like there's 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 a we big talk about most improved. Most improved are not supposed to be stars to to a star player to MVP level player. That's yeah. Most award. and that's why John ja Morant should have won last year. No, I think at the end of the day. He, no one was talking about Shea as an All NBA first or second team player. Shea's getting All NBA first, second team nods. He was a oh, it's good to get an All Star in OKC last year. He is like Laurie this year. If Laurie goes off next year and averages 32, 33 points and is an All NBA first team caliber player, like we can't. Is that not? Will he not be in the mention for most improved? You know what I'm saying? No, like he would not. No, he would because not. He's, he's shown that now. That's like the type of player that he is, bro. Uh, last uh, year we nobody. Not that. No, not, not. Last year we didn't think Lori had the capabilities to be a star player, bro. Like he was just a regular NBA starter. Last year we knew SGA. We didn't think he was gonna be like what SGA is now, but he was an exactly. All-Star caliber player. That's what I'm just like. Were you, were you, I'm were saying, you, were you, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm yeah. saying though, he was an All Star caliber player. Like usually when it, when it's MIP, bro, it's kind of like a regular. An NBA regular to like a star or something like that. It shouldn't be an all star to, I don't know. I guess a star. I don't know. I, I wouldn't call him a superstar, but no. Um. For for Laurie though, it's like when you actually look at it, right? Shea was doing the stuff he was doing this this year, last year. He's just doing it more often now in a higher clip. But it's like, bro, Laurie Markin actually developed his game into like. Being a better shooter, being a better uh, ball handler, putting the ball on the floor, being a better finisher. He just he just actually improved his actual game. So like what's what, why so it's different? Do you think Ja didn't deserve it last year? Who I feel do like Ja deserved. It? Do you think Ja deserved personally? It last year? I don't. Bang was I don't understand Desmond why you. Last year. Huh? Yeah, that's why he gave it to him. So I'm saying, that's do you think Ja it deserved it? Do you think Ja deserved it last year? No, no. Not and it was, it was like a trajectory. It was tra- a trajectory for Ja to become what he is. Like I'm not saying somebody expected to, him to be like this, but it's it was projected for him to be a star player, bro. So I don't know. Yeah, so I don't think he. Sh- Desmond should Bain should definitely win the last year. He was an actual most improved player. Ja was already like like like, like Jaden said, bro. Ja was already on that trajectory. So. They messed it up last year, and then they're not going to mess it up this year. Not gonna I get it. I just think there's there's still a lot of improvement to go from 24 a game to 31 a game. Nobody's disputing that. I'm just saying I don't think that's, that's – he's, well, he's not the, the most improved player, though. Improved. He's not the most improved yeah. player. Yeah. It's an 11-point jump is crazy, bro. Like, he, I mean, but, he was there a bench piece last year on the Cavs. I mean, he started, but, like, if, you put, if somebody put him on the bench, they wouldn't look, they wouldn't give a second thought, bro. Uh, uh Starters like six man type role to a star in an NBA is uh, the biggest. He was just jump. a serviceable player. And yeah, he was okay. More than that. I think like, you guys are underselling. I think you guys are underselling what Shay does, but that's all right. No, <laughs> How you bro. get into that? Point? I'm just saying. How you like, get into that though? Because I think last year everyone thought, oh, this is all Shay's going to be. Shay's going to be a all star level player. Uh, he's going to be whatever twenty five points. That's a game. what he is now, but though. It, but it's only because he's on a bad team. No, Shea is an all NBA level. Please, an all NBA second team or first team level player. That's more than an all star. That's an all star. That's not an all star. What is a star? What is the difference between a, a star all and an all star? Latif, are all NBA and all star level players different? Yes. Thank you. I don't think some, so. Some of them, some of the, some of the uh, all NBA all star players are not all NBA. Is Triple J an all NBA player? I don't think he should have necessarily gotten to the all star game. But he was, so is he an all NBA level player? I mean, he doesn't even fit my criteria for an all star. There's definitely, it's definitely a difference different. between the two. But I guess you can't. Different. I I guess you can't because it's it's like less spots. But uh, don't bring up Triple J. Like he he wasn't he wasn't even all star to me in my. Opinion. It's just is fundamentally Anthony, it's is literally Anthony, fundamentally, is, is Anthony fundamentally an all different. NBA level player right now. It's this fundamentally different because the all star is a mid season award, bro. Like, <laughs> and the mm-hmm. all NBA considers the entire season. It's literally fundamentally different. 
And Anthony Edwards is not an All NBA player, no, but he was All Star. So that's like, yeah, like and I, barely. I, know, I, think, I get Zion I was All Star. He was not an All NBA player. He he most likely could have if he would have played, bro. I'm you not just saying. I'm just saying. You it's, said it's yourself, Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy's emergence. Zion is a system player. What does that have to do with <laughs> anything that I'm fucking saying, bro? Like what? Yeah, he lost. Me. <laughs> All right, bro. Moving on. Six men of the year. Um, this is. I think we're gonna have different answers for this one. Who are y'all six men of the year? No, I can't no, get quickly. I was high on him ever since he came into the league. Uh, he's kind of a shot checker, but I don't know. He's he's definitely produced. Played well. So I, I got him as my six man of the year. I can see a man quickly, but like. Looking into it, bro. Uh, I'm seeing this all around Twitter, and I re really looked into it. Like most of his big games was he was, he was starting, um, so that kind of disqualifies him. I think um, Malcolm Brogdon was the better player off the bench, literally. Um, when he when he was off the bench, he was a better player. He's a better three point shooter, um, but that's about that's about it though. I think Emmanuel Quigley is a better player, but we talking about six minute of the year. Um, then I, I'll get it to uh, Malcolm Brogdon. I think I like I like Emmanuel Quigley's growth though. He, he he's gonna be. He's gonna be packaged in one of them big trades. If they ever try to trade for a superstar, RJ Barrett and Amanda Cookie has to go because Yeah, I was gonna say money wise, money wise, you can't have Brunson, Randall, and Barrett. So uh, Bobby I, Portis I would... is a good pick though. I know yeah, Bobby, Bobby Portis is a good pick. I I, I won't agree, disagree with somebody that's saying that either. Um but Amanda Quickly though, it's crazy though. He's gonna get a bag. I, he he literally is about to get a bag. Um and getting a bag is so easy nowadays. He's probably gonna get one of them Tyrese Maxi type contracts. I mean, Bro, I feel like like him, Emmanuel Quickly, Bones, and in a way, Tyrese Maxi are the same players, bro. Like, are they not? They got very they got similarities, but I think Man Quickly is better on defense than both of them. So mm-hmm. yeah, they, they they do them floaters and shoot a lot of threes. Not that not that good of playmakers. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, but yeah. Kind of like a playground feel. Yeah, they got that playground feel. I think um, I think Amaya Qu- Quickly is creeping up into that Jordan Poole, Tyrese Maxey, Tyler Hero tier, kind of though. You got to see more of it. Yeah, I think he's still a step or two away. Yeah, I say sure. he, if he if he gets more uh, more more tick, if he, if he becomes a starter. Uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna he gonna um, ascend to the level of player. All right, let's get into all NBA teams. We're gonna start with uh, all NBA first team. Uh, y'all want me to go first? Yep. Let's just. I feel like we'll agree on first team. Maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like we'll agree. All right. All NBA first team. I got Steph, Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, Giannis, and Jokic on my first team. Uh, biggest thing about this, though, is it's, it's, it depends on who gets MVP. If they give it to NB, he has to be first team. If they give it to Jokic, he has to be first team. So that's 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 the biggest thing for me. Um, y'all got any discrepancy with that? Is that what Luke you know? over. I put, I put Luke over D-Mitch. Yeah, I put Luke over I I can't put Luke over D Mitch just because um his team, team just got up. yeah his team just got but again up. again I just I, I'm not it's not an MVP award it is I know that, the best individual players if you think about it if you think about it I mean team success factors a little bit into it I mean both of them had great years also Donovan Mitchell um played a lot more games than Luca as well so Luca missed a, 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 some games Donovan Mitchell was more durable than him his team finished higher than him and it's like it's he Luca had a better year, but Donovan Mitchell had a great year as well, and so that's the reason he's my second guard. I All think right. I factored winning in a little bit into. I did not. Um, I second did not. team. I, I, wait, 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 that's the case. We, if that's the case. Saying, you could probably. That's the case. You probably could have Shea over Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I'm, but I'll, I'll be respectful. Uh, you go first. I'll say my second. Jaden, if you want to say third, we'll just all. Is that fair? Are you, you going to say your down. second? I was I'll say my second and Jay wants to say his third or you can just say them all. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, say some time. Go. All right. Second team, I got Shea, D Mitch, LeBron, Jalen Brown, and Bead. Wait, you got Dame on here? Yeah. Uh, sorry. No. Shea, D Mitch, Bron, Jalen Brown, and B. Did I say Dame? I got the same, yeah, but Lucas on my second D-Mitch. team. Lucas on yeah. my second team. For D Mitch. So we swapped. Yeah. So you Jalen Brown on the second team? Yeah, I got uh, Jalen Brown and B Luca Shay. Yeah, I was gonna say Jaden. I think it was different, right? We talked about this. What do you got? I got Dame, SJ, Brown. I put Kawhi in here, mm-hmm. and then uh, and B. All right. Kawhi with Jalen Brown? Yeah, I, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. 
I don't know, bro. He played a lot more games than him. That's that, that's that's. Yeah, I think I think I would, if Kawhi played a full season, Kawhi would be over Jalen Brown. This, sure, is a cra- this, this is crazy, but I don't have Jalen Brown on any of these. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, that's crazy. Jalen Brown not being in there. Jalen Brown not being in there is insane. Just, just, just Jalen Brown. I have this player over him, and y'all, you gonna be like, what the fuck? Uh, you gonna have Julius Randle over him, aren't you? No. Hell no. 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 You want to go go ahead to thirty team then because it, 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 it obviously interesting. All right, so now I get this is where like I have shit shaking. So I got D Mitch on my third team. Okay. Um, De'Aaron Fox, just I feel like he had, just team success, all that shit has to be on here. Um, put Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is it. just I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't Jimmy hate it. I don't Jimmy Butler is just that guy, bro. Like, I don't hate I, it. I, I don't hate like it. I don't hate it. This and then I have Lori, and then I got AD. <laughs> is eighty yeah, crazy? Nah. No, no. I would no. Sabonis. Sabonis has got to be three. Sabonis, bro. The three, Sabonis. the three centers. The three centers are kind of locked. It's MVP, no, the other one, and then Sabonis. It just the I games played like... matters, bro. And, so listen, my bro, thirteen AD played a decent amount of games. In Wait, where do you got Dame? Where's Dame? Dame second. All right, my... off, no, 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 no. Let me say. Let me say some. First off, eighty got <laughs> literally anally penetrated for not being on the fucking. Uh, <laughs> Not being on an all star team, like he deserves something, bro. He deserves it. That's not a good justification, bro. Um, I'm just saying, bro, like he, he deserves to be on his team, bro. I don't think, I don't think Sabonis is like miles ahead of him. I got my third team is Damian Lillard because, first of all, he had an amazing season, but they shut the, they shut the man down early, bro. That's that's an indictment on your season. Damian Lillard is my third Who's team. Who's fault is that? Bro, he they weren't good enough. They, I mean, like, it's not Dane's fault. How is that but like, his fault, though? I just literally said it's not his fault. But who? Do, so you got Dane over who? Who are thir- who are thirteen? Again, I got Dame over Donovan Fox Mitchell and, and no. Fox. See, that's 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 what you lost me. <laughs> no, 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 no. He can't be over. Bro, Donovan Dame Mitchell. was crazy, bro. Dame was doing like historical shit. Not saying Donovan Mitchell wasn't. Literally, was but Donovan same Mitchell thing. has a way better team, bro. I understand that, but I'm not. You got eliminated from the play. You got eliminated from the play in two weeks ago. I'm sorry. And you got lose. Like got to play. You, you got to play in. You got to got to play in, bro. You got to play Steph, in, bro. You have stuff in your first team, right? Yeah. See, I wouldn't. I, I have Steph and Donovan Mitchell. Team. I have seven Donovan Mitchell in my first team. I feel like it wouldn't be crazy if somebody had Damon Steph spot, bro. Like I don't think it's that that crazy. He can't be first team missing the play. Not be first team missing the play. I'm sorry. You can't be first team missing. The- bro, they had, they had a 13 team. Holy shit. He's, I understand that, but he's not even close. Coming into the season, you thought Utah was going to be better than them? The Thunder going to be better than them? Come on, bro. Yes, the Thunder was going to be better than them. No, they were not. Portland <laughs> is moody water. Portland is, Portland is terrible. Portland is honestly horrible. I understand Wasn't that. Wasn't hurt for a long-ass time, too? Yeah. yeah. You took the wrong Nurk. season, I, I think. Nurk is, no, Nurk was out for a minute this year. I mean, he's not good. So, I mean, why? about the wrong season. But anyways... You, it's no way Utah should be better than. Dan- I don't care what you're talking about. D- Damian Lillard is no Utah way coming was into looking this. Scared. Utah was looking miles ahead of everybody in the Western Conference at the beginning of the year. It's no way you should come into the season thinking Damian Lillard should have a worse record than the Utah Jazz, bro. Like, but it's not Damian Lillard. It's the Portland Trailblazers. I understand that, but he's on the team. He's the best player. Honestly, but that's the thing. It's honestly uh, he, got out, he got kicked out of the play in two weeks ago, bro. Dame, I'm sorry, that's, team, that's not Dame is their whole team. Dame can't average 100 points and block everyone's steal. Like, hey, I understand that, but, I mean, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Grant had a good year. Uh, Freddie Simons had a good year. So, right. do, do you mean hop on my third team? Hold on. Devin Booker is over De'Aaron Fox to me. Kawhi is on the third team, uh, not a second team. Not having Jalen Brown on here is insane. Um, You got Loyal in there, Jalen? Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's Yeah, I'm not agreeing with uh, – wait, so who would who, who they for it? What? Who's your thirty four? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy Butler Jimmy, is not Jimmy. over. Jimmy Butler is not over Kawhi. I'm sorry. It, it, it's, he's not over Jalen Brown either. So yeah, J- Jimmy Butler should be on. He should make it this year. The, the Heat literally right. suck. Uh, again, bro, I don't think it's. Team, I, I saw someone on Twitter. I think it was like, if uh, <laughs> somewhere, if if the fucking Heat and the Celtics match up, oh my I think god, Jimmy can do it, bro. No, he's not. They're getting swept. I think I seriously. <laughs> I seriously think Jimmy can do it. First of all, Jimmy is a playoff riser. That nigga's damn near. That, that nigga's damn near Bron. 
Like that nigga saves his energy for fucking playoff. No, I'm not. I'm not saying they're the same player. Bro. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying they're the same caliber player. I'm saying he's he like rises in the fucking playoffs. Like he becomes something I different. Right. You just um, this is a regular season award, by the way. But go ahead. Can I can I hop into mine? That's true. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we will have a discrepancy at one forward position. I uh, got Fox, Dame, Laurie, and Sabonis, and this is where you're missing time or whatever. I put KD. Hell no. You could put Kawhi there. It's not the biggest deal in the world. I put KD. So we'll just keep it pushing. I have KD. Yeah, Kawhi missed hella games too, though. Oh, yeah. KD missed forty games, bro. How much did Kawhi miss? Kawhi played uh, fifty-two games, so he played ten more games. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? I didn't think I didn't think he played that many games. I'm not gonna lie. He did. No, KD can't be on there, bro. He missed forty games. There's no way he's on there. I'm sorry. Well, you think missing I games don't KD. matter? It's, I don't know how you think missing games doesn't uh, doesn't matter, but winning doesn't either. So no, no, no. No, I think I think, no, it does matter. I think playing games matters for sure. I think the, your your idea with, with team success does. I just put KD up there. Kawhi missed time too. I don't really. I like Jimmy. Don't get me wrong. I think Jimmy. I think that, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I think the Heat failed. I don't think Jimmy failed as much. Um, LeBron James averaged LeBron James averaged thirty points last year and was thirteen All NBA because of, of, of games won. But um, that's how they do it. Literally, it next time my, gonna, it's my All NBA teams. We're going to do uh, all defense awards. Um, I'll start with mine. It's only two teams. So, on our defense, I got the God, Caruso, Holiday, Mobley, Jared Jackson Jr., and Brook Lopez. Done. Same. Same. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we know. Second team, Milton, <laughs> OG Ananobi. Jamie McDaniels, Giannis, and Bam. Now I got. I just don't have Milton. I don't. I swapped uh, Derek White with Anthony Milton. I got swapped Nick Claxton with Bam Adebayo. Yeah, so I have the same as Max, but just don't have uh, Nick Claxton over Bam. So Tief got Tief got, got Bam Milton. I have White Claxton, and you have Derek White, White Bam. and Bam. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. The Anthony Milton is a better defender than. Um, Derek White, you got. I'm sorry, Derek White's been a dog all year on that Boston team. But yeah, but he's good. Get... He's good at the rim. He's he's better at the rim than than he has the most ball perimeter. And then pass lanes, give me give me um. Like you don't need to be a good a good rim protector. As a guard. A like Derek White is a, is a good rim protector as a guard, which you don't need to be as a guard. Maybe, but okay. Anyway, so you're so it's hurting him. It, it him being a good rim protector hurts him as a defender. Anyway, I'm saying, what do you value um, more as, in a guard? What do you value more in the guard? Perimeter gotcha. defense or perimeter defense? Gotcha, perimeter gotcha. Um, Nick Claxton might be biased because he won me a lot of money on prize picks with his rebounds and blocks props. He was a dog all year. Um, but Nick Claxton, year. Nick Claxton, he should low-key be in contention for most improved player because he's been a very – I mean, he's improved a lot over the year. Um, but, yeah, I got Claxton over Bam. All right. All, all right. rookie teams. Now, this is interesting. It's interesting. I don't, I don't do all rookie teams. The entire year, like I, people, everybody putting out there, NBA awards. I've not seen no one, anyone, uh, all rookie team. So my all rookie team: Jaden Ivey, Benedict Mathurin, and Williams, Paolo Walker Kessler. That's first team. Yes, I feel like that's pretty standard. Uh, so we were talking about this. We were talking about this before. Um. Jalen Williams, uh, you. I think Ben Matherin does not deserve to be on the list, in my opinion, as far as like who are the five best rookies. I no, he Murray, definitely does. Keegan Murray is better. Keegan is Murray, off. Keegan Murray is better than Ben McMatherin all year. Keegan Murray is better than Ben McMatherin all year. Keegan Murray is like I think he's the next guy up. Not all if year. You, if, it, if if it's positionless, Keegan Murray is better than Ben McMatherin. Yes, there's the next a, guy there's up. A small time. Where what do you mean next guy up? What are you talking about? Me or Jaden? No, I was talking about Max. What do you mean, Jaden? Yeah. yeah, like you you said next guy up. Like, what do you mean? Like, if it's positionless next year, if it's positionless, oh, oh, he is the oh. like. I thought you. Were I think I think you can call honorable mention. No, Keegan Murray is like 
I, I think he is like the next guy in line right now. Like as far as this, I thought you were saying he was just, he was just like going to become like a star. Or some shit. No, I, I like Ike Murray. I like Ike Murray. I don't know. I don't know how good he can be. Um, I don't think he can. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he'll develop into like a star in Sacramento. Um, but he's obviously played really well. But um, yeah, I think I think uh, Jim Williams, Paolo, and Walker Kessler are guaranteed. I think Ivy's even guaranteed. I think that last guard position could go either way. Um, second team, um, it was pretty pretty obvious as well. Um, Shaden Sharp. Now, at the beginning of the year, I probably wouldn't say this, but Shaden Sharp has took a jump He's over the last. Uh, yep, Shaden Sharp has took a jump over the last um, end of the season. A very good um, three point shooter has some defensive potential. Very athletic. I think Shaden Sharp has a potential to be an actual star, and so he didn't get the opportunity. We have Dame and Anthony uh, and Anthony Simons ahead of him, but he's out in uh, probably next year. Uh, Andrew Nimhart is my second team. I'm a second guard um, on my team. And I have Keegan Murray. I wish Keegan Murray could be on the first team, but it's not how it worked. I got Jeremy Shohan, which is a hard position. I, the four, second four was a hard position. I think I had um, Jabari Smith and Tari Eason and Jeremy Shohan and players like that. I think it was a toss-up for, for, for the uh, four on the second team. And I got Jalen Duran, obviously. Jalen Duran is, was uh, the second best center. This year, it was a good year for the Pacers as far as drafting. They got uh Nemard, Ben Matherin. Yeah, they did a good like, job. Very, yeah, I agree. Draft. I agree with Carlos. All right, we're gonna get into some like some superlatives. We got um, give me a uh, player. Go ahead. We never mentioned, sorry, we didn't write it in. We never mentioned Clutch Player of the Year. That's the new award this Clutch year. Clutch Player of the Year, De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox. Fox. We all got De'Aaron Fox. Literally just, the best sorry. player in the fourth. Just wanted to make sure we, we mentioned that that's a new award going in this year, which I kind of like. But Clutch Player of the Year is De'Aaron Fox. All right. Give me an impressive player or team that you're impressed with this NBA season. I'll hop in first because mine kind of encompasses this. Uh, we talked. There's another. I, I don't know if we'll hop into it, but um, there's another superlative we kind of talked about, and I'll kind of mix it both into one. And, and that was the uh, one player I owe an apology to. Uh, and that kind of goes to the same thing for me. I was not high on the Jalen Brunson deal at all. Uh, I didn't think he was like a – terrible player at all but i thought he was getting overpaid i thought this was just another you know new york overreacted and they signed whatever jalen brunson a big deal just because he had a couple good games um yeah jalen brunson's played out of his mind this year he's played very well um arguably i think maybe not even arguably been the best player on that team i like him more than julius randall but best player on the Knicks team that's what we say fifth seed aren't they a fifth seed right now um who new york Knicks. yeah nick yeah so, uh, yeah, owe an apology to Jalen Brunson because I was not hiring that signing at all. Um, but obviously it paid off. So I'd say most impressed player is definitely Jalen Brunson. Who you got, uh, Jaden? Um, I'm just going to go with a team on this one. Uh, okay. I'm most impressed with the Kings. I think we stated this earlier in, like, a past episodes. Uh, just, like, I don't think anybody would expect, like, the, their roster to do what they do. I think they're at third. Third or yeah, fourth. third, third, third. Third in the Western Conference. Uh, I think Mike Brown has helped that team uh, tremendously. So, I don't, I don't think anybody expected them to pull that third spot out in the West. So, I'm just going to have to say the Kings. True. My impressive player uh, slash team, I'm going to go with a team as well, like Jaden. I like the Grizzlies. Now, the reason I had the Grizzlies is because through all the contrary this year, this year from, through losing um, Jaron Jackson Jr., through losing John Morant, they kept – Steady. We got the second seed. A lot of people predicted that the uh, the Grizzlies were going to fall. It'd be at like the fifth seed or like five through seven, but they were the second seed again this year. They are they were still good without John Morant. So I gotta give it up for uh, Taylor Hendricks. He's an amazing coach. That's an amazing team. And so uh, yeah, that was my uh, team. I was impressed with. Next, we got a team or a play disappointing team or disappointing player. I want to start off R.J. Barrett. I'm very disappointed in you this season. You're supposed to take a jump. You got that contract, and this year you were you were shitty. Your your trade value is terrible. I don't think the Knicks gonna get a lot for you if they try to trade you. Um, you didn't improve at anything. You're not a good defender. You can't shoot. You're good at the rim, but that's about it. I don't. I'm really dis- disappointed in um, RJ Barrett um, as a player. I'm not really high on him, and I don't think his potential is that high anymore. I'll take it next. Um, this saddens me to say, but. 
I'm most disappointed in Zion Williamson. Uh, when you did play, you played phenomenal. I believe that you were a top 10 player this year when you did play. But the thing is, you didn't play. That's the biggest problem. And now we're, this is the second straight year that the Pelicans are making a playoff push, and you're not here for that. Um, is it possible that maybe you can uh, probably come back during the playoff berth? I don't know. Possibly. But it's looking like you're not. So I'm mostly, dis- I'm mostly disappointed in you, Zion Williams. Uh, my team, I picked a team. Uh, the Miami Heat minus Jimmy Butler. I think Jimmy Butler um, actually had a pretty good season. Bam? Huh? Well, well, Bam was better than Jimmy Butler in the beginning of the season. Like, uh, all in, in the all beginning summer. of the season. Bam is up and down. Bam is one of the most up and down players. Um, sometimes he's guaranteed 20 and 10. Sometimes he doesn't show up. The biggest issue with them was their shooting. They had all this money tied into shooters, and they couldn't shoot the basketball. Um, yeah. Duncan Robinson, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent. Like, they just did not shoot well. Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero. Like, just guys you just don't hear about it, like, as much anymore. Um, Miami, I think, were – whatever, you made the finals mm-hmm. a couple years ago. You uh, obviously have made runs the past couple of years. But I think for most people, like, Miami is in that conversation with um, – Philly and Boston, as far as just being like a guaranteed top seed in the East, at least a five seed, four seed. Um, obviously, had an off year. Uh, I don't know. I think they'll go back to the drawing board this summer. They need to make a splash, but we'll see if they actually do it. But um, yeah, I'm definitely disappointed in Miami too. <laughs> My bad, bro. Uh, I, I want to. I got two more teams for the most disappointed. And I'm watching this. Uh, this nigga. Rudy Gobert punch. <laughs> yes. Like, what is wrong with him, bro? Like, bro, they they they're losing. If they make it to the playoffs, which I doubt it, probably they losing in the first round. It's no I feel way. so bad for Anthony Edwards. Anthony, like yeah, that, Anthony that, Edwards. Oh my god, that team chemistry Jeez. is crazy. Gobert is. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony Edwards in Miami. Trey Anthony Edwards in Miami. Oh my you see, god. You see, cat on the bench just shaking his head. Yeah, like, he, he, he fed up, bro. Um, <laughs> that's what my hey Minnesota is one of the most disappointing teams this year. I get they lost cat for the remainder of the season, but. That's what you bring Rudy Gobert in for. He's a you, you gonna pay Rudy Gobert two hundred million. He gotta be good. He's he, I mean I feel like some of the pieces they got in the trade were better than him this year. I would take one one Kessel over him. Um, one of the worst trades in NBA history is gonna go down there. So Minnesota was definitely disappointed. Um, well, I, hold on, hold on. Before one second, like I, I feel like I'm not really disappointed because we all thought they were gonna be bad anyway. You know what I mean? No, I didn't know. I, I, think, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't think they were gonna be bad. Did you either? Well, who thought know. he was gonna be the play in? What are you I talking thought, about? I, I thought when this trade, this trade, I thought was terrible from the get go. I was not a fan of this trade. I did not like how it was going to work at all. Like I just, I guess maybe like when I look at the when I look at the West, like I didn't think they would finish better than L.A., L.A., Denver, Memphis. Like I don't know. I'm just, I guess maybe I was a hater, but I thought this trade was terrible from the get go, and I guess that's why I'm not disappointed because like they finished around where I thought they'd be. I thought like maybe they probably like fifty, fifty would be respectable. Like come on, bro, like. Being a nice seed is crazy. Um, also, I have another team, Atlanta. You trade three first round picks to get Dejounte Murray, and you're in a play in. That's disappointing. You didn't yep. get any better at all. So that for me, Atlanta was very disappointing. I think. Um, are you saying you were disappointed, as I am, Jaden? Okay. Yeah. Um, that might be it. Um, no, it was what? a player you owe an apology to. Oh, player yeah, you owe an apology to. I mixed um, that one into mine. Mine was Jalen Brunson. I mixed mine in with Jalen Brunson. Player I own. You got with somebody, Jalen? A player that you want yeah. to apologize to? Go yeah. ahead. Once again, I'm going to say sorry to Brandon Ingram. Uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for leading yeah. this team into the playoffs, man. I, I really appreciate it. You, you're doing this for the second straight year. I'm sorry, man. Uh, uh, Latif, I think I, I, Latif, you owe a couple of apologies this year, even if you're not going to admit it. Yeah, I want you to admit, go ahead and answer that for me because I have no idea who you're talking about. I, I judge these players fairly. I was going to think about Jalen Green, but no, he doesn't get any uh, remorse. I was going <laughs> to say, you just got to apologize. <laughs> I want to get Jalen Green on this podcast so bad. Holy hey, – we no, just got to like – why? Because you're scared of him or something? Like, uh, we just got to like, I, I can't be up here just – You just need to that. stop the hate for Jalen Green just a little bit. Like, it's just like – it seems personal at this point in time. That's a, Is that the player you were going to say I need to give an apology yes, to? Yes, yes. For what? Jalen Green? You just, like, I don't know, why, I don't know what you're doing. Wrong? Has he proved me wrong? But, like, it's more – it seems like a personal attack now. It's, like, beyond basketball. No, it's not personal. I literally like, said he's not going to – I didn't say I didn't say anything about his character. I said he's going to say DNA, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said – I literally said I don't think – well, I ain't going to lie. Saying he was 
he's not good at basketball as strong. But I just think you got like a, hating you got like hating your heart towards that guy. I just I just think like if he doesn't pan, he can be a six man. That's how that's not like not crazy. I don't think. No, but, but saying he's bad at basketball, I, I don't know. That's like his whole profession. What does he do good at basketball? He scores. Yeah, I mean it's a little bad. inefficient, but he's a little the inefficient. Potential's there. It's very inefficient, but he still scores the basketball. Is it so? You're acting, if, if someone, you're if someone, like, if someone, you're someone is, like you, Latif, you're if someone like scores you 40, thirty 50, points, 90, you look like you're acting like you would shoot 40, 50, 90, averaging thirty points and ten assists every year. I don't need him to do that. Huh? He has not. But, but people are acting like Jalen Green is is has yes, Jalen Green performances like fucking Russ did that one year uh, when they lost to the fucking Jazz. Like wait, he was like eighteen for like forty three or some shit. Like he's inefficient. But he's not. It's not. It's, no, he's very bad. Green, he's very Jaylen bad. Green, he's very inefficient. He's very inefficient. Yeah. Would you trade Jalen Green for RJ Barrett? No. No, but J- RJ Barrett is terrible. What are you talking about? <laughs> would you trade Jalen Green for RJ Barrett? Like, if you were the That's, Knicks, would what, you, would what you trade Jalen Green for RJ Barrett? Actually, nah. Not. <laughs> I would take Jalen Green over RJ. Why Barrett. would they? Why would they do that though? Because they already have the black court. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't care about the hybrid. Like, I'm just simply saying, like. I think Jalen Green is a higher ceiling than a lot of people give him. Yeah, it's like no. RJ Barrett is dog. Like, <laughs> but nah, Jalen's ceiling for uh, Jalen said he's gonna be a uh, what's it called uh, All Star next year. So obviously, he could yeah, be. I think he, I think he can. No, it's be. not happening ever. Um, well, not ever, but not, not, not <laughs> again. It just, it just sounds personal. It sounds personal, <laughs> bro. No, I actually love Jalen Green. High school and and the G League. It's just like, bro. If I see you, I, last year, I gave you the benefit of the doubt, but this year, it's just like, brody, you, you got to show some improvement. I don't think he showed any improvement. Um, I will apologize for Christian Porzingis as well. I, he he had a, a good season this year. It ain't at least it went in, but I, I owe Christian Porzingis an apology. But yeah, that's gonna wrap up the episode, man. Um, follow our YouTube, TikTok, everything at Timber Tap Podcast. Um, we just hit 800 followers on TikTok. We just hit um, 170 YouTube subscribers. We still trying to grow. Want to get a quick little episode out. So we did two episodes this week. Um, these, these are all NBA awards. Talk about the Mavs as well. Um, but if you guys don't got anything else to say, we can um, we can get out of here. All good. We'll see you guys next time. Appreciate you guys.